Hey guys and welcome to another episode tutorial with me Joseph Evans, author of the Secret Sequence books and the Phoenix Prophecy, the Ember Effect, Soulbound, the Secret of Rain, the Last Goodbye and Glitch Girl. If you find my tutorials helpful and you'd like me to continue making them, please take a quick moment to check out my Patreon page and see the different ways that you can support me. If you do decide to support me, you can get a range of rewards as a thank you from me, including early access to these tutorials, voting on what tutorials I make, episode goodie bags, shout outs for you and your stories and even personal help from me. You can also get certain rewards by becoming a member of my channel. All you need to do is click the join button underneath this video or click the first link in the description of the video. Okay guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to code a keypad. And before I go any further, I just want to show you exactly what I mean. So the reader is shown this static keypad and is asked to enter a code. The reader can press any of these keys and when they do, they light up and make a sound. The code the keypad is looking for is four digits long and if the reader enters it incorrectly, they get an incorrect code message and they have to try again. My code is 8615, so if the reader enters those numbers in the correct order, they get a correct ding and they're able to move on to the next scene. To make this, the first thing we're going to need are a load of overlays that make up the base keypad and each individual lit up key. Now, you have two options here. You could spend a lot of time creating your own in a photo editing app, or you could just use these exact ones that I've made for you. You can find the download link to all of these overlays in the description of this video. I've tried to make this look as generic and versatile as possible, so it can be used in any story genre. Once you've got those overlays uploaded to your account, you're gonna to want to start with a background. Any background will do, but I would recommend something that makes it look like your keypad is attached to a door or a wall of some kind. Now I've made a custom one called Grime Wall, so I'm gonna use that one. Int Grime Wall Day. And then to get my base keypad in there, I'm gonna to need to write with in all lowercase letters and keypad. I also need to put all of my individual lit up key overlays in there. So to create the first one, I write at, then the word overlay in all lowercase letters then key one and the word create in all lowercase letters again. And to make my life a little bit easier, rather than writing this out for each individual key, I can just copy and paste this until I've got 10 of them. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then just change the numbers accordingly. So two, three, and then zero as our last one. Of course, we don't want any of these lit up keys to show just yet. We only want them to be visible when the reader presses one of them. Thankfully, we don't have to adjust the opacity of any of these because when you create overlays in the body of the script, it automatically defaults their opacity to zero, which means they start off as invisible. Now, here is where things get a bit confusing. Instead of using the lit up keys as the overlays that the reader presses, I'm gonna need to create 10 invisible overlays that sit on top of each key. The reason for this is that to get the lit up keys to appear in their correct positions, I've exported them all at 640 by 1136 pixels, which is the correct pixel size for a one zone background, with each of these keys precisely placed where they should be within that transparent space. This saves me a ton of time and hassle trying to manually position them in the web previewer. Now, if you've decided to make your own overlays from scratch, then it is possible to export all of your lit up keys without the correct positioning and then position them manually within the web previewer. But it is super difficult to get the exact positioning using this method and your lit up keys will most likely appear off a little. So I would recommend using my invisible overlays method instead. So. To create these invisible overlays, I'm going to need a completely transparent PNG that is the same size as one of the buttons. This is also included with this set of overlays that I've made. And its name is key blank. Okay, so to create the first of these, I write at overlay, then the number one and create from key blank which means that I'm creating a duplicate of key blank and I'm simply calling this duplicate one. And to save myself time once again, all I need to do is copy and paste this for every single one that I need to create. Change the numbers accordingly again. 
And once all of those blank buttons have been created, I'm going to want to load up the web previewer and position each one of those on top of its corresponding key. I want my number one invisible overlay to be here, right above my number one key. And because this is invisible, it really doesn't matter that much if my positioning is a little off. As long as it sits roughly on top of this key, it will work, which is why this method is a lot less finicky than using the lit up keys as the tappable overlays. So I go down and I copy and paste the position into my script. And then I just go ahead and do the same for every key. Okay, now that I've got all of my invisible overlays in place, that is my setup done, and it is time to begin the minigame. First things first, I'm going to want to create a label at this point. So label, and you can call yours anything you like. I'm going to call mine keypad underscore start. And then let's have the narrator say enter code. And instead of this being a regular choice, I want it to be a tappable one. So I write the word tappable and then underneath I write the name of my first overlay in quotation marks so that is just the number one then open up a curly bracket two lines down and close the curly bracket just like you would with a regular choice and now I can fill this space with what I want to happen when that number one is pressed so the first thing that I want to happen is I want the lit up number one key to suddenly become visible so I write at overlay key one opacity one and to get that computer plink sound in there I write sound computer underscore plink and of course once this is pressed I don't want it to stay lit up I want it to kind of flash lit up for about a couple of milliseconds and then return back to normal so let's pause the action for 0.2 seconds and then we want this lit up key to become invisible again so at overlay key one opacity zero and so that I can test this I want to send the reader back to the start of the label just so I can see what happens and see if this works so I write go to keypad start and let's give this a try okay there we go guys so as you can see the number one when I click it makes that sound it lights up and none of the other keys are working yet so this is perfect this is exactly where we should be at this point now to get all of the other keys working, all I need to do once again is do a lot of copying and pasting. So uh, let's copy that, paste that and just change the numbers. And do the same for all of the keys. Let's test that again and see if all of these keys are working now. There we go guys, they are all working. Perfect. But of course, it doesn't actually have any functionality just yet. At this point, I need to decide how long I want the correct code to be. Now you can have your code as long or as short as you want it, but since I want mine to be a four digit code, I'm gonna need to copy and paste my tappable choice and all of its contents another three times so that there's four tappable choices in total. So copy and paste that again, that's two, three, four. If you wanted yours to be say seven digits long, then you'd need to have seven separate choices and so forth. Okay, so I want my four digit code to be 8615. How do I get the keypad to recognize that this is correct and that all other combinations are incorrect? Well, the way to do it is with character points. Every time my reader presses a correct key in the sequence, they'll gain a point. And if they have exactly four points at the end of the sequence, then the script knows they've gotten it right. Since my main character is Sekri, I'm gonna use him, but you can actually use any character in your story. If you're already using character points with your MC for something else, then definitely don't use them for this. If you do, it will screw up all of the reader's progress. If you are already using character points for your MC, then you can either use one of your other characters for this, or just make a dummy character whose sole purpose is for this keypad. Okay, so let's go back up to my first choice. And because I want my first correct digit to be eight, then I find the option for number eight. 
And within these curly brackets, I write at, then my character's name, then a space, then plus one. And that will give Secre a character point if the number eight is selected. Then I can just copy this line of code, go to my next choice, and because I want the next number in the correct sequence to be six, I just find the number six and paste it in there. Go to the next choice, I want the next correct number to be one. So I paste it right in here. And I want the final correct number to be five. So there's number five, paste it in there. Now, when the reader gets to the end of the choices, I want the script to tally up these points to judge whether they've got it right or wrong. So I write the word if in lowercase letters, then I open up a regular bracket and I write my character's name, then a space then equals and the number four. Of course, if you have say a five digit code, then you put the number five there. If you have a seven digit code, then you put the number seven. Close that regular bracket, then open up a curly bracket right next to it. Two lines down, close the curly bracket, then you want the word else in all lowercase letters, then open up another curly bracket, two lines down again, and close that curly bracket. If the reader has entered the correct code, then they will have exactly four character points, whereas if they've entered one or more numbers incorrectly, they'll have less than four. Okay, so if they have gotten it correct, I want to reward them with that nice correct ding sound and then have it transition into the next scene. So within this first set of curly brackets, I can write sound correcting and then I can just put transition fade out black too. And that's all I need to put here really because this will now automatically go beyond this point, which is where you're going to have your next scene. And if they get it wrong, I want to give them the incorrect buzz. So sound incorrect buzzer. Then let's have a narration bubble in here saying incorrect. And the most important thing we need to do is send them back to the beginning of the mini game so they have to try again. So it's go to and then keypad start. And now that I've got all this in here, I can delete this original go to keypad start because I was only using that for testing purposes. And actually in here, what I'm gonna to want to do is add in some kind of dummy scene. Let's say ext Abbey Garden Day, and we'll have Secri just simply enter the scene. So at Secri enters from left to screen center. Now, one extremely important thing is that I need to reset the character's points every time they start the minigame. Otherwise, it will just keep adding points to them and the reader will be stuck in an infinite loop. So immediately after my initial label, I need to go in here and write at my character's name and then equals zero to set them back down to zero. And I believe this now should be fully working. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's try an incorrect code first. So 1490. Incorrect, brilliant. And then 5327. Incorrect again. Okay, so our correct code is 8615. Let's see if this works. There we go, brilliant. We have moved on to the next scene. Okay, that is it guys, a fully working keypad for your stories. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the helpful tutorials that I've got coming up. And if you'd like to support me and get some exciting rewards like early access to these tutorials and personal help from me, head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash author Joseph Evans, or click the join button underneath this video. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure to comment them down below. And if you know the answer to anyone else's questions in the comments, it would be awesome if you could give them a quick answer to help them out. Thank you so much for watching guys. Good luck adding keypads into your stories and I will see you all in my next video.